Hi Pisces, welcome to your singles reading for June. This is Mary and this is Leo Sunlight Insight. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. If you're new or returning, welcome and thank you. So Pisces, we're going to take a look at new love, who's coming towards you, your next person, your next lover, uh, your next date, your future ex. I don't know. We'll see. We'll just ever uh, see whatever comes out here. This is intended for uh, those who are wondering about new love uh, coming into them. It's not necessarily about, you know, an ex or someone you've broken up with or do you feel like you have a connection with somebody, whether you're together or not? It's an ongoing connection. I do love connection readings already, and those are on my channel, so feel free to check those out if you like to. This is intended for maybe someone you haven't even met yet, or it could be someone from the past that maybe you forgot about coming back, so in a way it would be kind of like new love. So, you know, however it resonates for you. So please only take it how it resonates for you. You may feel it's not for you. That's totally fine. This is an intended for Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, male or female, general collective. So what we're going to do here, Pisces, is with this deck, we will pull their energy, what kind of energy they're in or have been in. And then with this deck here, Life Purpose, we'll pull uh, their like spirit and soul energy. And then with the Romance Angels, we'll get their energy towards love, their love energy. And then we'll clarify all that energy with the Tarot. And then we'll look at how you would feel about one another. There will be any challenges and blocks, advice, guidance, possible outcome of the connection. So let's see what we have here for Pisces. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, male or female, general collective. Hope everybody's doing well, staying safe and healthy at this time. If you find this doesn't resonate for you, you can check the description box below uh, for your playlist. There's love in general down there. And you can find the singles under the love. And if you're interested in the love connection readings, uh, for a connection you have with somebody, like I said, whether you're together or not, those are under the love readings also, and your uh, generals are down there also. So feel free to check out the description box. Tons and tons of information down there. The decks I'm using, social media. Um, if you'd like to reach out for personal reading, that information is down below. So there's tons and tons of stuff down there. So with this deck here, we will get like their spirit and soul energy. So I'm going to pull the oracles first. And then we'll get, look at them, look at those, and then we'll get into the tarot. So what is this person's spirit and soul energy, please? For Pisces singles, new love. Okay. Let's get a romance angel. And if you're new to the channel, you can uh, check out my channel, like what you see. Feel free to, you know, subscribe all that great stuff. Hit the bell, you won't miss out. And um, I do about four readings a month, sometimes five, if you get the bonus reading. And they're all different. All my readings are different, so there's something for everyone. So check it out, like what you see. Subscribe, hit the bell, and if you do, thank you, and welcome to the family. All right, so what is this person's love energy like? A Pisces single, someone rising Venus, male or female, general collective. So let's see what we have. We have possessions, belongings, finances, assets, and treasures. And we have seven. Seven usually is about being um, very divinely guided spiritual number. But I'm getting, because the seven, this all kind of reminds me of like the seven of swords energy. So this person may be a little, um, I don't want to say sneaky, but maybe a little kind of deceiving, like they really uh, protect their possessions. They may, I don't want to say hide things, but I think what they have in their possessions are very, uh, very important to them. And it's like, I think they are almost like, not possessive or obsessive about it, but they're very, very protective. And they may not be upfront and honest about what what they truly have. There could be somebody who is financially like well off and set. I mean, not a millionaire, but they could be rich in some way. And they may not tell you that. They may hide that because they feel like they have to protect what they have. So they may be very, they may be a little greedy too in a way um, or stingy or something like that. So, I mean, this does kind of look like a mystical card, but I'm, I'm feeling with this person, they may work a lot and it's all about money, career, finance for this person. They're very passionate about that. With the red here, it's about this, uh, 
sacral chakra, I believe, which is like your passion and that kind of energy. Wow. Okay. So sometimes these readings do turn out a little, you know, um, sometimes not so good. So, you know, maybe this could be a forewarning for some. So we shall see. But we do have spiritual teacher. You heal with your classes, sessions, and seminars. So this is their spirit and soul energy. So, wow, kind of like conflicting energies to me because this seems very uh, possessive and um, like just all about career and money and that kind of, you know, assets and that kind of energy. But yet they could also be spiritual, be a spiritual teacher in some way, shape or form or some kind of healer also. Hmm. All right, so let's see what their love energy is like. Calling in your soulmate, your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. So this person could be very spiritual. Maybe, you know, they're very, you know, protective of their assets, their money, their treasures, their belongings. That's very important to them. It's almost like the status, like a status they have to keep. But yet they have a spiritual side to them also. I mean, they could be a healer or a teacher in some way, shape, or form. Maybe that could be what they do for a living or just like an interest on the side. They could be a teacher in some other way also. Or a mentor or something like that. Or like a spiritual... Um, I'm getting like e maybe even a, a business advisor or a uh, finance advisor or something like that. But... I think this person knows how to manifest, especially uh, when it comes to love and somebody here, you know, longing for their true soulmate, calling in their soulmate. So they're really uh, longing for that. It could be they were connected to someone in the past that was very um, maybe codependent and possessive in some way, shape, or form. Also, so it could be that also. So let's see. We're going to get into the tarot and let's clarify this energy for Pisces singles, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, male or female, general collective. What is all this energy? So we have the Six of Pentacles. We have the Seven of Pentacles. Yeah, and I felt that we're getting all Pentacles now. What do we have here? The Magician in Reverse. Though I felt like this is somebody that is able to manifest anything they want. And now we have Temperance. And we have the Ten of Swords. So let me get one more. Let me get one more. And then we'll read this energy for Pisces. So, and we have the Hermit. So let's see. We have Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, Virgo again. Could be some of the signs here. So I feel like this is someone who may be heavily, I mean, they like I said, they could be a financial advisor or something like that because we're having a lot of pentacles here. Some of the pentacles is about investing, assessing, analyzing. So they could be an analyzer, you know, and maybe they're just into like spirituality on the side. But um, the six of pentacles is about being, you know, balanced. And then seven of pentacles, you know, investing, assessing, analyzing. But the magician in reverse sometimes can be a manipulator. But I wasn't getting that energy. But then we have temperance, which is about healing and balance and patience, peace and harmony. The Ten of Swords is an ending. And then we have the Hermit, which is like deep reflection, solitude, and healing, and then finding your way. So I feel like... I'm, I'm kind of feeling like this person may have been... Um, involved in a situation in the past where... Uh, you know, they tried to keep it balanced and then, you know, they invested a lot. So they could have been involved with a manipulator and I had said someone maybe codependent or very possessive, which could be the magician in reverse. Maybe this person was very manipulative because we have the Ten of Swords here, which is about a painful ending. And then the Hermit, which is about going, you know, solo and retreating and healing and then trying to find your way. And then the Temperance is all about being patient and healing balancing out energies here that could be you know be when they became spiritual also is maybe they went through this energy and they had like a spiritual awakening also but i do think this is somebody who um also 
is very concerned about their finances, their career, and making money, and make sure, you know, I think money really is a big issue. I don't want to say um, issue, but a big thing for them. All right, so, wow, okay, my cards are all falling out here. So they may be alone right now, and now they're at the point where they've healed, they've done their um, deep soul searching and healing, and now they're ready to call in their soulmate. And maybe while they're in solitude here, and they've done the healing, maybe they became spiritual, had an awakening, and now they know what soulmates are, what true soulmates are. Maybe they realize this person in the past was a karmic partner, and now they're ready for a true love, true soulmate. And now they know how to call a true soulmate in. All right, so let's see let's see how you will feel about this person. So we got the King of Swords here. That's Gemini. Gemini. The Chariot. That's Cancer. So all the signs I say, I mean, they could be any of the signs or having them in their chart in some way. And the Page of Swords. So you may do a little spying about this person. Um, you may feel... Like you want to move this forward with the chariot, but you may want to find out. Um, I think honest communication is going to be a big thing here for you, Pisces, because you come out as the king or queen of swords, doesn't matter. And the swords energy is all about clarity and honesty and open, honest communication, cutting away energies, not serving and standing up and not backing down, all that kind of energy. So I think you're going to want nothing but the truth and honesty from this person before you move this forward. A lot of mental energy here. We didn't have any cups here or anything like that. I feel like you will want to move it forward or before you move it forward, you want nothing but truth and honesty and, you know, this person being totally upfront with you before this moves forward. And you may even do a little research about this person online first, too, with the Page of Swords. And that also can be that open, honest communication. So I think that's going to be very, very important for you, Pisces, before this can move forward. With this person, you may meet them like, uh, I don't know, like in a parking lot or like in your car or, you know, at a stop sign or at a traffic light or maybe on a bus or in some uh, sort of transportation. All right, so let's see. Let's see how, maybe at nighttime, see how they'll feel about you. Oh, that's way too many. How will this person feel about Pisces? Okay, so we have the Fool and the Five of Cups. So we have Aquarius here, and then we have the Five of Cups. So let's get one more. I mean, the Fool is about taking a leap of faith, starting, you know, jumping right in and wanting to, you know, have a new beginning here. And the Knight of Cups, so moving forward in love. So I feel like here, let me get these even here. So what I feel is they're definitely going to want to move forward in love towards you, take that movement towards you. Um, the Knight of Cups here can be uh, Scorpio. We have Aquarius. Um, but they have the sadness and hurt here. Loss. With the Five of Cups energy. So they may still be looking back on the past and how, you know, this past relationship and that may still linger in their mind because I see this person like looking back. So they may still look and reflect on that, but I feel like they still are definitely going to want to take this leap of faith and move forward in love. I think they'll get over this five of cups energy. I don't think they're going to let that hold them back at all. Yes, yeah, I think they've done their healing work with the four of swords kind of energy. Oh, I have reversals in here. I think they've done their healing. Um, four of Cups, you know, they're tired of being bored and melancholy and just displacent. Hangman, you know, they gain new perspectives. We have Pisces here, which is your energy, gaining new perspectives, enlightenment. And now they're ready to move forward with a lot of drive, passion, ambition, and go after what they want, which uh, this can be uh, Leo, king or queen. And then we have Leo under that with strength. So I feel like... They really, really got their strength back. I think they got over that Five of Cups. They'll get over that. They may have to do a little more healing once they meet you. Um, 
and gain new perspectives. You know, maybe they once they see like how upfront and open and honest you are with them and you want them to be and there's a lot of open honest open honest conversation, I think it'll change their mind about how they feel about relationships. Let's look at that. We got the lovers underneath, Gemini. So soulmates here, very strong bond with the strength card and lovers. So soulmate energy here. So let's see if there'll be any any other blocks or challenges with this Pisces. Any other blocks or challenges? So I kind of feel like I kind of feel like these are the blocks and challenges. So let me just lay these out here. Yep, because now I have six. So I feel like I feel like the blocks may be, they may need a little more healing because I think the past may still resurface for them. You know, how they thought about past relationships, how they were hurt in the past, how they were manipulated or, you know, codependent energies. So they may need to take a little more time on their own, you know, take a little pause with the hangman. But then I think they're going to get the strength here to come forward with all that drive, passion, ambition and uh, come forward in the soulmate energy here with the lover's energy. So I see that as a little bit of a block and challenge, but then I see them working through that. And um, I don't know. I think you'll be okay. I think you're going to be like, okay. And while they're doing their thing, you may start, you know, doing a little online research about them, seeing what they're all about. Because, you know, I see like a lot of sword energy. So I think... I think they'll be upfront and honest with you and say, you know, I like you, you know, here, but I need some time because my, you know, past relationship, you know, wasn't so great. And I just need a little more time to think about this because it's about thinking, taking a pause. Then I think they're going to come forward with a lot of passion and they're going to get their strength to overcome the past. So we have less swords here. So this, this could be winter energy. All right, so let's see here. Let's see what the possible outcome outcome could be for this connection. So we have the Nine of Pentacles, we have the Two of Pentacles, and we have the Five of Swords. So the Nine of Pentacles are very um, independent energy. The Two of Pentacles about finding balance or balance or feeling a little imbalanced. But then the Five of Swords is like, okay, is this a losing battle? You know, am I going to give up or, you know, is it worth my time feeling, you know, it's just a defeated cause kind of energy? Should I just stay sting single? Will these energies balance out? So we may go through a little bit, a little bit of that energy also. Um, what else here? To a surge, yeah, being indecisive. Not sure what we're going to do here. So you may be feeling like this while they're trying to work out their issues. But I see them coming through in the end. And then here's the wheel, Sagittarius energy. So here's fate, destiny, divine timing, you know, things getting better, things going in the right direction here. You know, bringing in what's meant to be and going in the right direction. So I feel like, you know, you may feel like, all right, maybe I'll just stay single here because I don't know if this is worth my time. Is this just a lost cause? And feeling, you know, a little indecisive about this. I just don't know what to do. Um feeling that this is a little imbalanced, maybe I should just stay single, but then the wheel comes in and I think they finally come through and say, look, okay, you know, I, you know, I want this. I really like you. Um, you know, let's do this. Bring in that wheel and the wheel of fate and destiny. So what else here? One more for Pisces, the two of wands. So being a little at a crossroads here, but choosing a path, going down it, making plans, decisions for the future. I feel. So let's get five from the bottom. I'll take those. All right, we got more than five. So we have the page of cups. So here's that communication coming in. You know, apologies, words of affection, terms of endearment kind of energy. Six of wands. So we got success, victory here, the star. So here's the faith, hope, optimism. Divinely guided healing energy and wishes and dreams coming true. Aquarius. Three of swords. So a little bit of heartache and pain. So I feel like there's still a little more healing that they need to do on their past heartache and pain here. But with the um, star here over trumping this three of swords, this is massive healing with the major of the star. So I think uh, they'll be overcoming that, coming forward with uh, terms of affection, that kind of energy. 
apologies maybe, and then we have victory here. So we have Seven of Swords. So this could be an energy of kind of like running away a little bit, uh, self-deceit, or deceiving kind of energy. But I'm not getting that. I, I still feel this energy of, okay, I need to just go on my own a little bit here. I just need to heal my past just a little bit more. And then once they've done that, they come through with their words of affection or whatever here. And then we have uh, victory moving forward. And making that judgment call, we have Scorpio here, making that final decision, judgment call, resurrection, forgiveness, uh, soulmates coming together for a brand new, passionate Ace of Wands, divinely guided, brand new beginning, very fiery, passionate, exciting Ace of Wands energy. So that's kind of what I see, um, Pisces. Now you may, you know, meet each other at a time when it's like unexpected. Um, I feel like, you know, deep down they're really wanting a true soulmate, and then it happens, and then, then they get a little scared, and they may retreat a little bit, and they realize, you know, okay, I thought I've healed, but I still have a little more healing to do. But I do see soulmate energy here, and this could be a, a good connection. I think there's going to be a lot of passion and a lot of uh, open, honest communication also. Uh, we didn't have a lot of cups, so this could have the opportunity... Um, you know, to grow, because I did see the Ten of Pentacles, so could grow into something more stable down the road. Okay, Pisces, uh, that's what I have for you, so best of luck to you, sending you many light, love, and blessings, and uh, as I always say, is to always, always shine your light.